34 season is Mark Person. When I came here, between March and the kickoff, we had to get a field, we had to get a schedule, we had to get uniforms, we had to get all the equipment. You know, we're getting ready to kick off, and I, I kind of looked around for a second and said, whoa, I'm not gonna be able to blame this on anybody except me. Coach Burson just gives us that, that energy to just, you know, keep battling, you know, to, and win every game. Hey, let's go out tonight, Gamecock pride, let's do it like Gamecocks for the rest of the season. Start it off tonight, let's go. Step on there and make a difference, make a difference. You can do it, you can do it. 17 minutes, run hard. Let's go, let's get this thing going. He won't hold anything back, I mean, he's our coach. You know, we respect him with you know, everything. We, we believe in him, we trust in him, but, uh, you know, he, he's gonna get on us if we, you know, we haven't played well. Get three guys in there and dump it in on that guy's head. Let's go. Mikey Brown is show to the corner. Six minutes, Stevie, Stevie. Everything forward now and press him in. Lock him in now. Coach Burson's, you know, style of play has really, you know, helped, helped me and helped his team to be a team hard to break down. His coaching style, his development style is gonna breed leaders. And I think that's part of what you've seen about success over the years at South Carolina. Leadership comes through the group in a lot of different ways. A lot of times it's experienced players, it's the older players. That's sort of the traditional way. You know, Vance Benson is one of the key guys, you know, who's, who's a really, really uh, a leader. Vance was in a situation he uh, last year broke his leg and came back this extra year to play with these guys. You know, it's pretty neat to see a guy like Vance Benson, who's not only your mental and your emotional leader, but he's also your physical leader on the field. He's a Tasmanian devil. He's the little whirling dust cloud that goes around, you know. And, you know, we talk in soccer in general terms about personality players. Vance Benson would be that. And to see his development from a freshman to a senior is probably one of the most refreshing things you'll do in this profession because um, he's a self-made guy. He can play, but he also brings that ferocious nature that I think other players want to latch on to. And then you've got a guy like Steven, um, who's kind of more of a, I don't want to say withdrawn, but kind of just a, more of a quiet leader. I'm going to go about my business, and I'm going to lead by example type of guy. So there's a good balance between those two. Steve, you know, is a, a classic quiet leader. You know, he's a guy that's been a rock steady performer for us for four years on the field, um, you know, and has been a very good player in pressure situations. He sort of leads by his And we're locked in. And they've really taken, you know, the responsibility of being a leader and being a captain very serious. And, and they do it in two different styles, where Vance is kind of more in your face, and Steve is kind of more in the background. Um, but, but it's a great combination. Bradley. His love of the game came at an early age. Steve. Growing up, uh, my whole family played soccer, so uh, I guess it was just natural that I would, you know, would play soccer. I just fell in love with the game, you know, when I was a little kid, and just kept going with it. In a lot of sports, you look at the sons of coaches, and you see some common threads. First of all, it's not easy. It's difficult. You know, there's a lot of pressure being the, being the son of a coach. He led a high school team to a state championship. I know that before. And uh, he was my ODP coach for he was an assistant ODP coach for about a year or two. And uh, when I when I got older, so before I came to college, to be the father and the coach, it's tough but truly enjoyable. And then if people wonder how I can sit in the stands and be real quiet. The dad, of course, wants to tell him he did great and everything. Uh, want to booster his ego. As a coach, I never want his head to get too Mike big. Left foot, oh, Valadez. Oh, a goal. As a young adult now, and people have told him that, that this might not be his sport, Bradley has just shunned that off and, and said, no, soccer is my passion, soccer is my love. It's not what I think, I, what you think I'm better at, it's what I truly enjoy doing. And I said, and that's what I've encouraged him. I think that, you know, there needs to be complete buy-in to what the team structure is all about. You cannot say one thing and do another. Remember now, one, one striker shows, the other striker goes, all right? So say it's played into chipper, right? 
And now, maybe back to Danny. He shows, he goes. You're coming in, Chip, after you play it. That's the most important thing to have, is a quality team culture. Look, now, any, any sequencing you want, but just talk to each other, look at each other, and read what's gonna happen. Uh, we work during the off season on developing our culture, on the values that we wanna have as a team, on the way that we wanna treat people within our team. Because when the players are out on the field, uh, they are in charge of the game. You know, you know as a coach that there's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some, some pitfalls. There's going to be some ups and downs. Build on experience. In other words, try to learn the lesson and not try to learn it twice. Just keep him going this way. Just keep it this way. Don't let him come in. No, no, not that. Stop. Keep him going this way. Keep him going this way. Don't try to win the ball. Back here. Guys have grown. We've gathered experience and really taken on a, 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 a position of leadership and taken on a lot more responsibility within the team. They, at times, have played better than we did last year. But, you know, finding that consistency and being clutch down the stretch, uh, I mean, that's, that's when you really win things. You know, they've proven that they, they have the ability to do it. House's Peace Cemetery served in the box, and this falls inside the 12, headed for the goal! Game that's time. a goal! Great builder! Our expectations don't change. You know, our expectations don't change. If we have a young team, if we have an experienced team, we, ex we expect to com compete for the conference each year, and we expect to go to the NCAA tournament. That's where the bar is for us. Showtime. It's one of the things about being here and like being part of a really successful program. You know, we should never lower expectations. And we recruit kids here who, who want to win championships and who want to go out and play against top 10 teams and beat them. And, you know, they just, they have to be ready to do it when, when they're called on. Bradley, yeah. you guys make sure when we lose the ball, you're back at the half line. He has worked very hard to develop the areas of his game that needed to be improved. Uh, Bradley's a guy that certainly can take on a lot of responsibility. He's been willing to do that. And more importantly, he's really embraced that role. And it's really improved in the aspects of the game which are not glorious in terms of closing players down, uh, immediate transition from attack to defense, immediate transition from defense to attack. Coming into South Carolina, I was I wouldn't say I struggled at a defender, but I mean, I, I mean, I've always been an attacker my whole life, so I really didn't didn't enforce like my defending because I, you know, I thought I was a poor defender. The impact that he's made on our roster and on our team at South Carolina is exactly uh, what we thought and where we thought he'd be. He just has the ability to impact the game in so many different areas. He's big, he's tall, he's athletic. Uh, he's 6'2", and he's a lefty, so he's got a lot of positives in his arsenal as far as the collegiate player goes, and there's certainly a player that is going to have the ability to play at the next level. I mean, it'd be great to play in the next level, you know, if I do get that opportunity. The progress of this team has been dramatic because they have all individually taken their assignments to, to heart. As a team, they understand what their mission is, and they've really worked hard to be physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, you know, ready for each game. It's opening up, but I can hear thunder. <laughs> Sean said we can't go out there until 6.30 because of the lightning. So he goes, what do you want to do? I said, I want to wait till 6.30. That's Must the most I, water I've seen on the field. I mean, that was like an unbelievable amount of rain. It's actually gone down since I, since I first came out here. It's a long way from being playable right now. All right, here's what's going on, boys. And we can't go till 30 minutes from after the last lightning strike. We will see whether or not 
that holds up. Right now there's actually standing water on the field, but the field is made to like drain pretty quickly. I would say we'd you know, be looking at probably a 7.15 or maybe a 7.30 kickoff right now, I'm just guessing. So just relax here, we got nothing to worry about. You know, this game's gonna be played. What are we doing? The referee's out right now talking with the company that did it to the and uh, we can warn the coaches down there as well. Okay. All right. I'm on my way. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Lightning to calm down right now. We have three hours from the kickoff to get the game, to start the game. So we have till 10 o'clock to kick off. So we will, we will back this thing up. We'll, we'll back it up as far as we have to back it up to get it in. So we're going to play the game. That's diehard fans, those people. Those are people that love the Gamecocks right there. What do you want to knock it back from now? I mean, the latest we can start is 10, just ultimately. 10, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimately yeah. is the latest yeah. we can start. So. This, whole, this whole band. All right, in so it's 8.30. It's half, in theory, it's a half an hour every time we see a strike. So we just saw that. And since we're half an hour, half an hour makes it almost 9. I'm paranoid, but, uh, but uh, you know, I don't want anything to happen. But it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, uh, you're feeling that confident. There's no, no, no. There's no way that I'm, if you're not confident, and you're not confident, and I'm not confident, that we're going to do this. So we all got to be, we all got to feel good. Yeah, we all got to feel good, so. I don't know, 30 minutes. Yeah, hey, look, we're, we're, we're doing the right thing. We're doing the right thing. It's the sky's just being lit up over there again, just like it was. Yeah, all you can do is all you can do. If we can't play, we can't play. Yeah, but we need this game right now. The reality is, if we get anything in the next, if we start in five minutes, we're done. I mean, once we stop it at any time, we're done. Because Correct. Like the o'clock window. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I think this is, I mean, you're here, we're here, the kids, obviously, they want to play, and we ought to, we ought to try it as long as it's, we're not risking anybody's safety. Okay. Fair enough. As long as we feel that way. we got to speed it up a little, so... Everything's just a little bit quicker. <laughs> Start fast, big opportunity tonight. Let's make the most of it. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's go. go. You have to be on three. One, two, three, you have Is that thunder or is that the music? He's waving. That's right over us. Is it? It's obvious this game does not need to be played. Damn, yeah, that, wow, that, I think that just sealed it. All right, okay. All right, see you in a couple, right. couple weeks. Well, have a great, have a great year. Have a great year. Thanks for coming down and putting up with all this. Despite all of us efforts to assist the tournament tonight's mask, please keep your tickets as re-entry will be allowed to a future soccer match. Well, let's do this. Yeah, let's just say it's postponed, and then uh, and then we'll look at because you know maybe later you get one canceled, I get another one canceled, and then you know we might be able to fit it in. So. All right, listen up, listen up, listen up. So here's here's the thing I just said. The game is is being listed as postponed, but it's it's really canceled, I think. The only way it would be fitted in, say, 
we lost another game later, they lost another game later, and we had an opening in our schedules we could do it. So unfortunately, that one's probably gone. So we refocus now, we get ready for Memphis. The, the silver lining in the thing is that we have a, little, have a little more rest to get ready for them. Conference opener, big game on the road, Memphis undefeated. Now, now's when our season puts an exclamation point on. We gotta get after these guys, all right? I'm counting on you guys to raise the energy level in this game now. You're going to get on tonight, and all you do is just play like you played every other youth soccer game. Just go. You're doing fine. I think that this group used the fact that they were battle-hardened in the early part of the non-conference schedule to learn lessons. They found a way to win tough games, and, you know, I couldn't be more proud of them. I mean, I think they expect to win, and I'm really proud of what they've accomplished because they put that into, into uh, action. The reason you're involved in athletics is for the players, and um, it's, a, it's a unique growth process because when they come to South Carolina uh, and you're their coach, you're working with them and you're helping them to get better. But a lot of times, it's a process that goes on over four years. Snoop, not bad, but go ahead and go at him once or twice. This year, uh, the seniors have done a good job and there's been a very good group of younger players that have responded well to us. Chipper is everywhere tonight. Chipper, Chipper Roots played well tonight. Cabo, save it! Goal again! Goals forward, goals, and right on cue! Your relationship with them after four years is a lot different than it is after the first year, the second year. It's a really, really rewarding feeling to have been a part of so many people's lives. You know, you're kind of the, the hub of the wheel and those guys are all the spokes and they're the ones that make the wheel. They're the ones that make everything happen. It's hard not to be impressed with this program the coach has built and the program that he's cultivated. There aren't many guys uh, that stay around in this business long enough. At one place and you get 450 wins, it just doesn't happen. Coach, the guys want you to lead them in. Bring it in here, 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 bring it in here. You know, things don't change. The, the guys are the same in many respects that they were years ago, you know. They just want to play and have a great time and get a great education. It's wonderful to be able to do something that you love. I enjoy it. I, I enjoy every day. I'm excited about doing it every day. and. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's going to be a point at some point when, the, when that's going to end, but uh, I hope it's not anytime soon.